Hello there everybody, this is Ed from High Point Scientific bringing you another video in our how-to series. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to install the aperture collimation knobs for the Celestron 130 SLT and DX130 telescopes. So grab your kit, grab your scope, and let's get started. Now before we get rolling here, one thing I do want to quickly mention is that this video is going to be broken up into chapters. Um, so you can check the timeline down below uh, to either skip ahead or rewind as needed. Additionally, we're going to be releasing a written guide uh, along with this installation video that will outline everything that we're going to cover today. So if that's something that you're interested in, check the description box down below for a link to that guide. So maybe you've purchased this upgrade kit or are just interested in it and you're wondering, what exactly do these upgraded knobs do for me on a scope like uh, the 130 SLT or DX130? Now, as you may or may not be aware, uh, these scopes, which are a Newtonian design, have two mirrors, one at the back and one secondary up front, that you need to align in conjunction with this focuser to get the best performance out of the scope. Now, the way that you do this in the stock configuration would be by uh, getting a hex head wrench or tool and adjusting uh, three screws that are inset in these three holes right here. And so what this upgraded knob uh, allows you to do is replace these with um, something that has this coin edge bezel and sticks out a little bit further so that you can manually adjust it uh, by hand whenever you need to adjust the secondary mirror. And so what that allows you to do is to uh, forego fiddling with, you know, finding that hex head or allen key in your kit in the dark while trying to locate into these little inset holes, all while trying not to drop the tool into the scope itself. So you'll just instead have these little screws that you can just grab onto, tweak, and then be all set. So let's take a look at what you get with the upgrade kit. So I've got my little package right here with the upgrade card, which is going to have an overview of the instructions we're going to cover today, as well as uh, some links for further information. And we're also going to get a hex head uh, wrench for removing the stock screws and our three upgrade uh, knobs. And so in terms of what we'll need for the installation, broadly speaking, this is it. You just need the kit and your scope. However, there are a couple of other considerations that we, you want to make um, to ensure that this installation goes as smoothly as possible. Number one, you want to make sure that you have a clean workspace and plenty of light so that you can see what you're doing. Next, you want to have the scope as horizontal as possible so that uh, either when you're removing one of the uh, stock screws or installing one of the replacement knobs, uh, if you drop something, it doesn't fall down into the scope and either uh, hit the mirror or, you know, get stuck down in here somewhere. Now, one way to do this, and the way that I'm going to be doing it for uh, this video here, is to uh, take the scope off of whatever mount it's on and put it on a table like this. Now, if you do that, you're going to want to make sure that you've got a large enough area so that if anything gets knocked or jostled around during the installation, your scope's not going to fall uh, off of the table and onto the floor there. Now, another way to do this is by leaving the uh, telescope installed in the mount, um, which will give you a little bit of a more secure platform so that it's less likely to tip over or anything like that. So you can just leave it installed and then just adjust the mount so that it's holding the, the, uh, the optical tube as horizontally as possible. Now, before I go ahead and get started here, I do want to strongly suggest that you watch this next segment in its entirety before you go ahead with your own installation. As you're going to see, it's really not at all a complicated process. However, it's always a good idea to make sure that you're fully aware of what it's going to entail uh, before you go ahead and proceed with your own scope. 
Um, this will just ensure that your installation process goes as smoothly as possible and you're not caught having to leave in the middle of it, which can possibly, you know, jostle your scope or maybe you'll drop one of the screws or something like that. Um, just in general, it's a good idea to make sure that you know how to proceed start to finish before you go ahead and get started. Now, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get this going. So, to start, what we're going to go ahead and do is remove one of these hex head screws that's inset uh, in one of these three holes here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab the wrench that's included with the kit. Um, if you wanted to use a different wrench, or maybe you just lost yours, uh, this is a 2 millimeter hex head or Allen key uh, wrench. So I'm going to start unscrewing this here. Now, what you want to do is remove uh, these screws and then install a corresponding upgrade knob one at a time. Um, now, this uh, style of scope does have a screw in the middle here that does hold the secondary assembly uh, in place. So if you did jump ahead and unscrew all three of these, at once, it's not going to fall down into the scope. Um, however, it does put a little bit of strain on that fastener. And uh, more importantly for what we're trying to do here is it's going to uh, basically make it much more difficult to collimate the scope after we're done with the installation process. I'm going to touch on that a little bit uh, as we go further along here. Uh, however, just suffice it to say, you really want to make sure that you're only doing these one at a time. So I can see that we're, our stock screw is just about out here. And there we go. Now that we've got our stock screw out, uh, before I go ahead and install our upgrade knob, one thing that I want to do is take the two of them, set them side by side, and ensure that they are the same uh, threads, same type of threads. These have been made to cover the 130 SLT and DX130 that are currently being produced and most of the ones that are all out there. However, if your scope has a different style of hardware for whatever reason, um, you don't want to be installing this fastener into the scope. What you'll want to do if these don't match up um, in thread pitch and style is take this screw, thread it back into the hub here, uh, put everything away, and give us a call or an email. Now, I can see that these threads match, and while they're not the, same, the uh, exact same length, that's by design because this does stick outside of the hub, whereas this is set uh, quite a bit further inside. Um, but since the, thread ma the threads match, we're all good to go. So now that I've verified that, I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side and start installing our replacement uh, knob here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got one hand on the scope to keep it steady here. I'm going to take our replacement and just put it into the hole that we just got that stock uh, screw from. Now, I'm not going to start tightening this immediately. One thing that I particularly like to do is to rotate this actually um, the opposite uh, way that we're going to be going to tighten this. So by turning it in the reverse direction, there, you might have just heard it, but what that'll do is make sure that these drop into the threads uh, of the hub um, and prevent you from uh, possibly cross-threading uh, the hub and the fastener together. Now that I just heard that drop in, in um, I'm going to go ahead and start screwing this down. Now you don't necessarily have to do that, it's just a good way to make sure that you're not cross-threading anything. Um, if you're threading this in and you feel any bit of uh, resistance or grit, stop what you're doing, unthread this, 
and inspect the threads for any damage or grit or anything stuck in there. Um, if you see any grit, clean it out and restart the process. If you see any damage to these threads, um, just reinstall the stock screw and again, give us an email or call. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this all the way in. Now what I'm going for here is we're going to get to a point where it starts to snug up. That's where we're going to want to stop. We don't want this tight. We just want it installed to the point where it's snug. There's quite a bit of threads here so you can see it's taken a while, but take your time. There's no rush. What we want to make sure that we're doing is getting it right. And just there, I can feel it starting to snug up. So that fastener's all done. Okay, so now that we've got one of these installed, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm again going to take my hex head wrench, insert that into the screw here, and go ahead and start removing that. And while I do this, let's go ahead and circle back to why you, you want to make sure that you're doing this one at a time. Assuming that your scope is properly collimated, uh, when you start this process, all of these screws are going to be set at various different depths to adjust the kind of the tilt of that secondary mirror assembly. If you were to remove all three of these screws, you're going to lose that reference and you're just going to have to Start from scratch, get these all into, uh, you know, an even depth, and then try and fiddle with them from there to find uh, even a coarse idea of what a good collimation uh, is. By removing one at a time, we have two of the uh, screws or knobs holding the secondary uh, mirror in roughly the same position that it was when we started the process. And so we're going to be a lot closer to where we started if we do these one at a time. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and grab my replacement or upgrade knob, set that in, turn in reverse until I can feel that. grab and now tighten it down and there we go that's snug all right one left so let's go ahead and slot this into the last stock screw here and get this going. Now one thing that you might see while you're swapping these around is that the secondary mirror assembly uh, can rotate uh, very slightly when you're removing uh, these screws. If you loosen one of these it might shift a little bit. Now, what that means is that after you install these, if you found that it shifted, you'll have to reach in and loosen one of these fasteners and just shift it back uh, slightly. That's not going to be a big deal. However, again, if you were to remove all of these uh, set screws at once, it's free to rotate just about as far as it wants to, and so you're not going to have any idea uh, where the rough position that it should be uh, is. So again, this process is partly about taking our time and making sure that we do it right and taking steps to ensure that we're not giving ourselves a big headache later on. Now that I've got the last OEM screw out, let's go ahead and install our last replacement knob. Alright, so set, reverse, Heard it click and grab, and here we go. 
there we go. Nice and snug. Alrighty, so now we've got all of our upgrade knobs swapped over, and we're ready to go ahead and collimate our scope via whatever method you prefer. Okay guys, so at this point your scope should be up and running with the upgraded collimation knobs and be ready for clear skies. If, however, you've run into any snags or issues, don't hesitate to shoot us an email or give us a call, as we're always happy to help. Additionally, if you found this guide helpful, we'd really appreciate it if you could give us a, a like on the video down below. Now, don't forget to subscribe for more uh, how-to videos and more astronomy and astronomy product-based content. Uh, as always, I hope you guys found the video helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, clear skies.